I brought the message entitled Spared by the Grace of God. And folk, we need to count our blessings. The Lord is patient with us. He has a lot of grace for us. But in our text today, we're going to be reading concerning God's chosen people, the nation of Israel, particularly the tribe of Judah. But God gave us this record of Israel that we might profit from their error by their mistakes. And the Bible tells us that he gave us the record for that purpose. That we might not make the same mistakes that they did. And we might glean from them because we have the same God that chose Abraham and his seed. We'll begin reading from Ezekiel chapter 9 verse 4. And the Lord said unto him, Go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem, and set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sigh and that cry for all the abominations that be done in the midst there of those that really are broken hearted about what's going on among God's people. Put a mark in their head. Though they really care. And verse 5 says, And to the others he said in my hearing, Go ye after him through the city and smite. Kill him. Let not your eyes spare. Neither have ye pity. Go ahead and wipe them out. Slay utterly old and young, both maids, little children, women, but come not near any man upon whom is the mark. And begin at my sanctuary, begin at the house of God. Then they began at the ancient men which were before the house. And he said unto them, Defile the house and fill the court with the slain. Kill them all. Go ye forth. And they went forth and they slew the people in the city. And it came to pass while they were slaying them and I was left that I fell upon my face and I cried and said, Ah, Lord God, wilt thou destroy all the residue of Israel in the pouring out of thy fury upon Jerusalem? God, you're going to kill us all. Verse 9, Then said he unto me, The iniquity of the house of Israel and Judah is exceeding great. And the land is full of blood, and the city full of perverseness. For they say, the Lord hath forsaken the earth, and the Lord seeth not. God doesn't know what's going on. Therefore we'll do our thing. And God's giving the order to the uh, death angels here to go ahead and kill them. But once again, this text falls in the midst of a sad time for the people of God. Jerusalem had turned to idolatry again. And God was showing Ezekiel what all was going on. And he then gave him a a little uh, took him on a little trip and showed him something if you would look in the middle of your page Ezekiel chapter 8 verse 6 and he said furthermore unto me son of man Ezekiel see thou what they do you need to see what your people are doing even the great abominations that the house of Israel committed here that I should go far from my sanctuary but turn thee yet again, and thou shalt see greater abominations. Ezekiel, you don't know what you're doing, but just come follow me. I want to show you something. 
said, verse 8, Then said unto he, he unto me, Son of man, dig now in the wall. Or let's back up verse 7, I'm sorry. And he brought me to the door of the court, and when I looked, behold, there was a hole in the wall. Then said he unto me, Son of man, dig now in the wall. And when I had digged in the wall, behold, there was a door. And he said unto me, Go in, and behold the wicked abominations that they do here. You go in that door and see what's going on. So I went in and, and I saw. This is what he saw. And behold, every form of porno or creeping things and abomination beast and all the idols of the house of Israel portrayed upon the wall round about. Brother, they had it there. Wicked. The idolatry that they were committing. And there stood before them 70 men of the ancients of the house of Israel, of the religious leaders. And in the midst of them, Jezaniah, the son of Japan, with every man his censer in his hand, and a thick cloud of pot. Incense went up. They were smoking pot. Uh, they were committing their ungodly deeds. Then said he unto me, Son of man, Hast thou seen what the ancients of the house of Israel do in the dark? Nobody can see in the dark. Every man in the chambers of his imagery, for they say, the Lord seeth us not. The Lord hath forsaken the earth. Since God doesn't see us, we'll do what we want to do. That was their thoughts. And even it began with the religious leaders of the day, the 70 ancient men. So judgment came. We see that he sent the destroying angels in to wipe out the people that were committing these ungodly deeds. Even to the young people that were doing those things. But while all this was going on and Ezekiel was looking upon people being slaughtered in the streets he said I looked and nothing happened to me. Why? Why were the angels killing the other folks and not bothering Ezekiel along with the others that received the mark? Because they stood faithful among the unfaithful. Ezekiel served God in the midst of a sinful generation. Folk, that's not easy. It's not popular, is it? It's not popular to serve God now. Because he was grieved at the sins of the people. God brought judgment. But this subject, why Ezekiel was spared, invites an inventory of our own life. Some of us can recall when many people died, even because of some dreaded disease. Brother James here, sitting on the front, had polio. When he was a small boy. How old were you, Brother James? One year old. One year old. But during that time, and I remember well, I'm a little older than Brother James, but there were kids dying everywhere with polio. Y'all remember that? And those iron lungs they used to try to keep those people alive? They were dying by great numbers. And why did it affect some and not the others? Typhoid fever visited my family way back under and if it wasn't for the grace of God I wouldn't be here today. My dad was pronounced dead at two years old and placed out on the cooling table. And that little colored lady came and worked with him and said this child's still alive. And my dad went back to breathing. And I, that would have been 1914. 
1913, I'm sorry, he was born 1911. He was two years old when that happened. But folk were dying everywhere because of typhoid fever. And they tell me they were burning houses down because families would die. And they wanted to eradicate that disease so they would just burn a house down where that was taking place. But some have been spared those things. Some three years ago, a little over three years ago, Linda and I were coming back from Huntington to Houston and out on the Highway 59, just about two miles south of Dyball, we came up on a plane crash right in the middle of the freeway. Y'all remember that? Y'all know a fellow by the name of Ed Hindy? Some of you may know him. He owns the Taste of Texas restaurant down here in the Memorial area, mall area there. But he had took off from, the, the, from Angelina Airport and had an engine trouble and had to crash that plane on the freeway. He was banged up, but his life was spared. But many of our childhood friends are dead, aren't they? They were just as good as us, maybe better. But we ask the question, why were they taken and not us? My mama raised us in Sunday school. We went to church period whether we wanted to or not. But I was in a class with a, a group of boys and there was about 12 in the family. But there were several of the boys' brothers that were in our Sunday school class. There's a couple of twins there by the name of Roy and Ray. Westmoreland by the last name. At 15 years old, Ray Westmoreland took pneumonia and died. But he was the one that was always active in church and one that was always praying and uh, helping out wherever he could. He was a guy that us boys even considered the good guy. And we asked, I used to ask the question, why did the Lord take him? The best of the bunch. Folks, sometimes that happens. The Lord takes the best, doesn't he? Well, that's biblical. Josiah was a boy king, was he not? Brother Enrique alluded to him this morning. Eight years old when he began to reign. And he got a hold of God's word and he saw what had happened to his people. And he commanded that everybody straighten their act up. Amen. And the Bible says about Josiah that he was a man that followed God with all of his heart. Now the Bible says about David that God loved him with all of his heart. But God says about Josiah that he was a man that sought to follow him in all of his ways. And folk, God did him a favor. God let him die at 38 years old so he wouldn't see the destruction of of the people that was coming. He spared Josiah. This scene that we're, Ezekiel's going through when the, God's people are, had gone so far that he brought judgment on them. Now, these people were dead in their sins, were they not? And now they were dead, period, because he was killing them. There's some today in our world, in our generation, that are dead in their sins. Yet, they may still live. 
I'm persuaded that some people that God may set aside just leave them be let them do their thing now we ask the question is it that yet grace may yet visit them or is God sparing them for a riper judgment Folks, this was a great judgment here. But let's ask the question this morning. We look around us and we know we've lost our loved ones and family and so forth. We ask that question since God spared us. Why did he let us live? You ever ask that question? I'll tell you why he let you live. He got a purpose for your life. Amen. And I'm persuaded that if we're not trying to accomplish that purpose, then we are not looking, are we? We're not listening. But a gracious providence has watched over us from childhood. We were preserved amidst a thousand dangers from a baby. And even during our reckless days as, as youth. Well, you know, I think about it sometimes. It's a wonder we all even get grown. We take so many chances. I don't know about girls, but I know boys did. And I'll give you an example of talk about myself. Now, well, I don't hurt anybody else's feelings, but we were kids. We were daring. We'd try anything. My dad worked at a sawmill, and it was ran off of steam. And there was great big pools of hot steam out by the mill. And us boys would take the old oil cans and set them out in that hot water that would cook your flesh off and we would proceed to walk across that hot steam sure enough I stepped on one of those cans and it turned over and my foot went into that heated steam and I began to run home. My brother running with me. And I took my shoe off and the skin came with it. It had cooked. I could have fell on my face and it would have cooked my face. But it's just those childish things that we do that it's a wonder we ever get grown. But God watches over us, doesn't he? It's by His grace. Especially in reckless days as youth. and We try God. Sometimes we tempt God. And the Bible says we shouldn't tempt God. Now, this text would cause us to, uh, to look at our life and the future. Judgment had come to Jerusalem. And folk, if you hadn't figured it out yet, the scripture says that judgment's going to come to the whole world. That there's coming a day of judgment, is it not? And it's going to begin at the house of God. Look at verse 6, that's where it began. Verse 6 says, Slay utterly old and young and both maids and little children and women but come not near any man upon whom is a mark and begin at my sanctuary and then they began at the ancient of men which were before the house judgment came to Jerusalem God's chosen bunch 
And folk, I got to tell you, judgment again is going to come to the whole world. There is a judgment day that shall come. But in Ezekiel's day, the first verse we read on verse 4, beginning with there, you notice it says that he went and marked the men in the forage, didn't he? Those that literally had broken hearts about the condition of the people of Jerusalem. God marked them in that day. And folk, i got to tell you, there's coming a day of tribulation that's coming on this earth. It's going to come before our Lord comes because the scripture tells us that there's going to be days of trouble. And I believe the rapture is coming after the tribulation. I believe we're going through that, folks. But during that tribulation period, if you would, look at the last two verses on your page. Revelation 7, verse 2 and 3. And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels, to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea, saying, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. Now, you hear a whole lot about the mark of the beast, don't you? But you don't hear much about God sealing his. And folk, these very well could be us as that tribulation unfolds and as we go through that. And I'm, this is not a doomsday message for the Christian, is it? But it's a day of victory. It's going to be doomed for those that don't know the Lord. And that's why I come and stand before you and proclaim his word that God loves us. He wants us to spend eternity with him. And that's why Brother Enrique comes and he leads this group of soul winners as they go out this afternoon talking to people about their soul. Because uh, he feels compelled for those people to be saved. And the, the Lord said, how shall they hear unless someone goes? And that's what uh, they're doing. Ezekiel was spared when judgment was all around him. And I've got to tell you today, the good news is the children of God, those that have come to know the Lord Jesus Christ, are going to be spared because of the blood of the Lamb. Because of the blood of the Son of God. That's already been shed for our sins. Judgment has already fallen, hasn't it? It fell at Calvary. And folk, I accept the blood that was shed for my sins. You need to do the same. For you. But if you're here this morning and you haven't made things right with our Lord as your Lord, well, I'm happy to tell you today that you still can. You need to do that today.